What up, you two? Big Lou of Big Louis Coach Review back here with another review, and today we're here to do a little review on an Italian mechanical tube mod. And that's right, this mechanical tube mod is brought to you by a company better known as Caliber mechanical tube mods. They're a company out of Italy by uh, a guy who designed them by the name of Giovanni Albanez. Now, Giovanni Albanez came out with the Caliber mechanical tube mod, I would say back in August of 2017. I received this mechanical tube mod back in September of 2017, and I've been using it in my daily rotation. For those of you who don't know, my daily rotation will consist of at least 25 mechanical tube mods. That's right, I cycle through 25 mechanical tube mods on a daily basis. Ask anybody that may know me personally and they will vouch for me and say, yeah, that fucking guy walks around with a backpack loaded with mechanical tube mods and he's just fucking going back and forth all day on all different mechanical tube mods. Now, with that being said, this is a 92 millimeter in height mechanical tube mod with a 27 millimeter in diameter at the thickest point of the mechanical tube mod. Now the inner diameter of the walls is measuring in at 4.7 millimeters in thickness. Therefore, this mechanical tube mod has a really nice weight to it. It's got this really nice design in the center, which is concave in the center of the mechanical tube mod, and it fits and feels really comfortable in the hand. It's a really nice one. They actually come in just straight copper or straight brass, or you can get this black Cerakoted in brass or in copper, like the one that I have here. Now, they also do very interesting patinas. Patinas like I've never seen. Uh, the only person I know who does patinas really well, aside from this company, is a guy better known as Vapen Pete. Vapen Pete out of the UK, he does a lot of patina jobs. So check him out on Instagram, Vapen Pete at uh, an Instagram. So at Vapen Pete. Okay, so check him out, and uh, you'll see that he's got amazing patina jobs, and he's working with companies as well, banging out patinas for companies. But this company, Caliber Mods, they're doing experimental patina jobs on, with themselves, so they're basically doing a lot of acid and salt and different type of corrosive effects to patina and, you know, do artistic looking designs on their patinas of their mechanical tube mods. I mean, they're really, really nice. The clear coat is gorgeous, and they still maintain their Caliber logo on the mechanical tube mods once they've actually done the uh, patina process. So it'll patina around the logo, which I think looks pretty cool. But um, aside from that, this mechanical tube mod, I actually like it a lot, okay? I know I'm biased because I'm Italian and you know I love Italian product, but I can't help quality when I see it. You know, when there's quality in a product, it makes you want to have it. You know what I mean? And this, you know, I've been kind of selfish. You know, I've had this for a while and I didn't share it with you guys. And I apologize for that. But I go through a process where I actually use these things. Um, so I don't just get a product and review it quick. I get a product and I hold on to it for months. Then I review it. You know, you can still get these mods. They're still available. They're still out there. They still run a bit of a price tag, but you know what? The sever coating on here is really strong. And for me to have this since September and show next to no wear on the mechanical tube mod, especially with this mod sitting in a bag with other mods banging into each other and everything, trust and believe this sever coating is actually really strong and really thick. So it's very durable. I'll take a drag real quick. Up top, I got, you know, the basic uh, Armageddon Apocalypse RDA. I got it in the black. Mine's starting to fade a little bit. You can see some of the black is starting to wear off on it. But I like this because it looks good when it's murdered out. And I got a Ultim drip tip. And this Ultim drip tip is actually from Mike Vapes RDA, the Icon version one. So that's where this drip tip comes from. If anybody wants to know where I got it, that's where I got it. Oof.
It's just so responsive, you hit the button. And let me tell you, speaking of the button, really intricate, really cool designed button, which we will take a look at. Now, I saw the early versions of this button, and I've seen it on uh, Todd's eSig reviews. He did it like a year or so ago on the button, but they've done some changes to the button, and therefore I'm going to show you in this video those changes, okay? But other than that, Really good mechanical tube mod, great in the hand, very comfortable. I give it five stars, honestly. I mean, it's really a hard hitter. It is a comp mod. It is uh, linked and uh, stated to be a comp mod. The venting will happen around the actual switch area at the bottom. So if you want, place your positive pin of your battery facing the switch, okay? And it does vent and it does have some space in there. You can see it around your button. So the gas is will escape through the button. Other than that, really good mechanical tube mod. Let's dive up close, let's check it out, let's go from there. So this is the Caliber Mods website. Uh, it is in Italian, so if you're using a cell phone and you have a way of translating the website, you may need to view the page as a desktop computer rather than a um, mobile app version so here we go saiga limited edition handcrafted italian mods okay um we have the switch design here as uh you can see there's delrin and so forth but i'm going to get into showing you guys you know how the switch actually works this is a black ego it's going for 325 euros now, looking at the description of the Mechanical Tube Mod on their site, they're saying the Saiga Black Ego is based on a single button system, better referred to as the FCS system. Now, FCS stands for Full Contact Surface System, which is equipped with a self-adjusting system that uses a contact of an entire flat surfaces for energy transfer, thus creating a single body between the key and the body of the Saiga Comp Mod. Thanks to this, the FCS system does not need to use any joint or even uh, no conduction thread, further reducing the voltage drop and ensuring a significant difference in terms of performance. So it works on transferring electricity through huge surfaces to reduce voltage drop as minimal as possible. The Black Ego has a new upgraded button system provided for the hex screws instead of the stainless steel version 1 pin that was in the version 1 mechanical mod for easier disassemble and cleaning processes. Now looking at the bottom surface of the button itself, you'll see that it does display the Caliber Mods logo with Black Ego and the serial number, which I have 067, and it is uh, engraved deeply and nicely and perfectly, and the font that they used is a Times New Roman font. Now, looking at the top portion of this button where that hole that goes straight through the button, that area where it's angled, that is known as the full contact surface, which will make contact with the inner walls of the mechanical tube mod just below the threads. And that whole area will make contact with the inner tube. Now, if we examine the actual button itself, it is a hunky big piece of copper. It is heavy. It has some nice weight to it. And you'll notice on the side, there are two holes that go straight through the button itself and they are threaded. And these are used for the hexagonal steel screws that are going to be holding our solid silver spring in place. Now, this is the solid silver spring that's going to sit inside the copper contact and the copper button. Now, this is the Delrin battery height adjuster, which is threaded, and it is part of the switch 
in which it will thread into the mechanical tube mod and it holds this center copper contact pin. Now looking at the contact up close, you'll notice that it is square and the square section will sit in the battery height adjusting Delrin, preventing it moving from left and right. The center, we got the full contact surface with a center divot to prevent battery arcing. Now what they've done here is they drilled a hole straight through the lower portion of the contact. So this way when you install your hexagonal screws through the button, they will meet into this lower part of the contact. Now this gold-plated spring is going to sit beneath the Delrin and above the copper button, and it's used as the tensioner for the switch. Now what I really like to do is put this switch back together so I can show you guys how it's done. Now if you look at the bottom, we do have those holes going through the contacts. So I'm gonna grab my solid silver spring and I'm gonna jam it in through the center of it, okay? There's a lot of tension in this solid silver spring. It is hard to flex it. Next, we're gonna grab our Delrin battery height adjuster, slide that on and fit the square end of the contact through the Delrin area so it doesn't turn left and right. And then we're going to grab our gold spring, throw that on top of there, and this will sit between the Delrin battery height adjuster and the copper button. When you compress these together, be sure to line up the hole on the copper contact up to the hole on the button, grab your hexagonal screw, place it into the hole, and grab your hex key at that point once your screw is sitting correctly, and then start screwing it in while you're still adding a little bit of force to the contact and flexing it down so you could line up the holes correctly. And keep in mind, this has two hexagonal screws. So what you do to this side, you're also going to have to do to the other side as well. And here we go. So let's just screw this in. I usually go in reverse first to find a thread, and then I go forward when I screw my screws into especially copper, because copper is malleable and soft and can strip. Now with the gold spring, you can see the type of resistance there is in the button. It is not a strong resistance, but it does have a firm resistance in the spring. Now the height and length of the mechanical tube mod without the button measures in at 87.39 millimeters. And at this point with the button and the mechanical tube mod, it is measuring in at 90.53 millimeters. If we look down in through the inside of the mech tube facing the 510 connection, you'll notice that there's a little heat tempering in there from when they heat up the coating on the exterior of the mechanical tube mod. It did have a little color change on the inside. Now looking at the mechanical tube mod from the lower portion or upside down, I should say, we start with the outer rim where the black coating ends and then you can start seeing there's that little highlight and it goes to that copper ledge right there. And then from that ledge going up to the threading, this area is better known as the full contact surface area, meaning when the full contact surface of your button is pushed up, it's going to sit flush on the inside of this mechanical tube mod and close the circuit. Keep in mind, the threads are only there to guide the battery height adjustment on the black Delrin piece. 
Therefore, you don't need to use the threads as contact surfaces. The only contact surface there is is below the threads from when the button is touching the inside walls of the mechanical tube mod. Now, this is a Pandora RDA. The Pandora RDA does not have an uh, elongated pin on the 510. It does protrude slightly from the 510 connection, but this Pandora RDA, I mainly use it on regulated box mods that go up to like 220 watts, and I prefer to use this specific RDA with that specific type of install. Uh, looking at that 510, you can see it's just barely coming out, like maybe two millimeters sticking out, and that's it. Versus another RDA, like the Armageddon Apocalypse. And looking at the 510 connection pin, you'll notice it protrudes a mile. Like this thing is sticking out far out, and that's exactly what you want to use on a hybrid mechanical tube mod, is an authentic, Armageddon Apocalypse RDA. Now this is the Pegasus Vapor Academy uh, 18650 Type E battery. Uh, it's 1500 milliamp per hour at 3.6 volts, very low density, ultra high discharge of 30 amps. This is the Type E battery. What I love about these batteries is that they tell you the recommended usage on regulated devices of 150 to 225 watts in series, you can use these batteries, or analog single use, like in a mechanical tube mod, of 0.15 to 0.12 ohms, or analog parallel use in a parallel mechanical box, usage of 0.07 ohms to 0.06 ohms, I obviously push the limits on all my batteries just to test the mechanical tube mods, which I do not recommend anyone to do. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to drop our battery into the mechanical tube mod positive facing the switch, then thread in our bottom switch, not all the way, just up to a certain point because we need to install our RDA first before we tighten down our switch. Um, so take your RDA and drop it in. And what you wanna do is you wanna get the building deck to sit flush on the top of the mechanical tube mod because there's that little ledge up there. So once you get the deck in fully and flush, put your cap on and then tighten the remainder of the switch. And you'll see the very minimal throw we will have on this mech tube. Check this out. You push it just a hair, but it's a very strong throw and that little gold spring and the tension in it, it's not a whole lot of tension, but for some reason, it will not fire standing on its own. You really have to push down on your mechanical tube mod to fire it. So there you have it, the Caliber mod. This is the Black Ego by Caliber Mods. And I gotta say, Giovanni Albanese did a really, really good job. And I'm really happy to see that Italian products are coming out with really strong, hard-hitting mechanical tube mods made with quality and good innovation, especially in the Switch area. Italy's been doing some really cool stuff with Switches, and, and I gotta commend them on it, you know? So. You know, they're a good runner-up in competition. Now, Russia has got some sick, sick fucking mech mod designs out there. So if you're out there checking out Russian mechanical tube mods, trust and believe Russia is doing some really good shit in the vape scene with mechanical tube mods. Uh, I got a mod coming up to review. Uh, I'm not going to talk about it yet. It's going to be an exclusive review, and I'm not going to wait a long period of time. I'm going to use it for like a week or so, and then I'm going to exclusively show it to all you guys on YouTube. So nobody heard of it, nobody knows about it, but I'm gonna put it out there for the public. So from me to YouTube, peace out. Like, comment, and subscribe. I'm out of here. Laters.